Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is a tutorial for a Baby Yoda keychain. I've made one of these before and I'll insert a picture of that here. But today I'm going to show you how to make it. So I'm just gonna assume that you've made like possibly like a couple alphas before, but you just wanna know how to go step by step through this one. Um, because I would recommend starting with it because it does have quite a lot of color changes. I would recommend starting with one about this size, but with less color changes, it might be easier. But um, yeah, let's just get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a keychain. So I'm using this one. It's, I can't remember the exact length of this, but it's a good size. I think it might be a little bit small, but I think it looks good for this pattern. You can also get ones that are three fourths of an inch wide, an inch wide. Um, I will link both in the description. Um, but then the next thing we are going to do is pull out and cut our base strings. So the base strings are the strings along here, these white ones at the top of these knots. So those are your base strings. So those are all going to be straight down and then the knots are going to go across those. And so I have this crochet thread that I actually just got like two days ago for base strings. And my friend on Instagram at Liv's Bracelets, I will link her Instagram in the description because this is a very helpful tip because I used to use just DMC thread for my base strings, but this is a lot cheaper and as you can see there's a lot of it, so it's a lot better option for base strings, but of course if you only have DMC that is perfectly fine. I have always used that. So we're going to count this out and we have 1, 2, 15, 15, 16 base strings. So what I do is I will pull it out about double the size of what I want and then I fold it in half and that would be one. So we're just going to get eight long strings. The keychain itself will probably only be about this long, but you want your base strings to be longer. I always make them too long, but you'd rather them be too long than too short. So mine is about this long. I don't know if the whole camera can get it. So yeah, that's just what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have eight of these and then when we put it on the keychain, it will be in half. So that will equal 16. So I'm going to do that right now. I now have them all cut out and I'm just going to go back and count them again to make sure I have the right amount because it's always the worst when you start a bracelet and you find out you don't have enough and then you have to go back and add it. So it looks like I have eight and so the next thing I'm going to do is just take one of them and then take your keychain and I'm just going to take the two ends of this together, line them up and then we're going to take that and put that through the keychain here and then put it through this loop on the other side, like so. And then you just pull it tight, you can move it to the edge, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of the rest of these on. I now have all my base strings down, so I'm going to tape my keychain down. You can also clip this to like a clipboard, like I like to just take this and attach it to the clipboard. And some other people like to have just like a string across and then you attach it to the string, but I think I'm just gonna tape it down. So I have my keychain taped down and I'm just going to pull all my base strings down. As you can tell, they're kind of going off the edge a little bit. Um, that's the benefits of like a bigger keychain. To start this bracelet, we are going to have the background color. So in this pattern, it's gray. So I'm also going to be using gray. Um, this one is 414 for DMC. Um, so this just goes back and forth until the pattern. I actually don't want that many or that much background space, you know, so I think I'm going to start um, probably in row three and just go that way. So that way it's starting at the same, um, starting going to the right, same as this, but I just don't want as much background if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna cross the first two rows out so it doesn't get confusing. So there we go. I'm gonna be starting in row three. The first three rows then are just gonna be straight gray. So I'm gonna get out my gray string and just pull out quite a bit. I know some people like to just use the string as you go but personally I like to cut it and so it's easier to pull through and do the knots but you know whatever you want to do you can do. Then to start this bracelet I'm going to take another small piece of tape and tape this to the end here and put that right by the beginning of the bracelet. So the first knot is a forward knot onto the first base string. I will take the first base string and my leading string and do a forward knot. So that is like a four this way across and then pull it through like this. And then the second half of the knot. 
and then you would just take this bass string, move it over, go to the next one in line. And we're just gonna be doing this across the whole row. So I'm just gonna do a little time lapse, but I'm not going to do it onto the last one because we're gonna do a straight edges technique. So that is forward, backwards, and backward, forwards on the edges. But I'm just gonna do it all the way up except for leaving out this one, and I will show you what to do there. So I'm now at my last bass string and we are going to do a forward backward knot. So this keeps the edges straight on an alpha. Otherwise they look, they still look fine. So if you like the look of that, but I just personally like to keep them straight. So the first knot will be a forward like normal. And then the second half will be a backward. So you go backward. And then it's the same thing on the next row. So forward and then backward. And then on the pattern, it has another row of all gray. So I'm just gonna do backward knots all the way to the end. But the same thing, I'm gonna leave out my far left bass string to do a backward forward. So now this is pretty much the same thing as the other side, but we will do a backward forward this time. And then the same thing again to start the next row. And the next row is all four words all the way across. So I'm gonna do that time lapse again. I'm to the edge once again, so I'm going to do a forward backward and then another forward backward to start the next row. And in the next row, we are going to add a color. So I'm gonna do four gray ones and then I will come back to show you how to add the green knot. I just finished the four gray knots and now we're going to add the green. So I'm gonna use this tape from this one cause that one's already well into the bracelet. But actually first I'm gonna get my string. So this is um, 710 from Loops and Thread, the brand. And I'm just gonna pull out pretty decent amount. It doesn't need to be too much because it will just be this head part and these two hands. So it's not as much as like the base string but there's still quite a bit of green knots. So just like, however much you think. This is probably an arm's length and maybe a little bit more. And then kind of like we did before, I'm going to take this tape and this time I'm going to tape it on this side because we are doing um, backward knots. And I'm going to pull it under um, the strings that I already did. So it should be right here. And what I'm going to do is, so for the flat alpha technique, this is invented by the knotting addict, I believe. I will make sure that's correct. But this keeps your alphas more flat and it kind of makes the colors and the strings weave together better. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that. So you do the first half of the backward knot, pull that up, and then you'll take your other leading string, for me is gray, and then you just cross it over this way. So it's like right in the center of the knot and then you do the other half of the knot like that. So now your green is in your bracelet. So that is actually the only green that we have right here. So now we are going to switch back to gray, which I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm gonna do these two rows of gray and I'll be back to show you these green parts. But for now, we're going to have to switch back to gray. So I'm just gonna move this base string over. And now the gray is gonna come back down from the top and we'll do kind of the same thing as the green. So first half of the backward knot, and then we will take the green, cross it over, and you kind of can pull that to make sure it comes over good. And then the other gray on top of that. Now you'll take the green string and you can just pull it under your bracelet. And actually you can take this tape off if that makes that easier. So just pull it under the bracelet and up and out of the way. And then you can continue on the gray. So I'm gonna do that all the way to the left and then back to the right where we will do the other green knots. The grays are now finished, so I'm gonna pull my green string back in. And this is similar to before. I'm going to do half a forward knot. and then pull all the gray over to the right and then do the other half and then this time we have two green knots 
right here. This time, the gray is going to go up just for a little bit. I'm going to do the other green knot like normal. And then the gray will be back in, so same thing as before, we will do half a gray knot, then put the green through, and then the other half of it. Now the green will go back up and we will do gray all the way to the edge. The next row we will be adding the pink color, so I'm going to use DMC 402. So first I'll do four grays, then a green, and then we will add the pink, the same as we did with the green from before with using the tape to insert it, and the same method as putting it in with that thing where you do half a knot and then over and through. So I'm just gonna do this whole row, but you will just be doing four grays, a green, the pink, a green, and then the rest of the grays. I'm now at my next color change, so the next thing will be two pinks and then a green and then four grays. So I'm going to pull down my pink, make sure the green stays up there, and I will do two pink knots. So the first one will be the forward, pull the gray through, and then the other half. Then you can put the gray above and do the other pink knot. Now I'm going to pull the green down and do the first half of a green knot, pull the pink through, and then the second half, like that. So now I can pull the pink up and then get the gray back and do the same technique. So I'm sorry if the lighting changed, but my neighbor decided to cut his grass, so I wanted to move to make sure the sound quality was still okay, but I just finished row number nine, so now I'm on row number 10, so this is gonna be three gray knots, and then five green, and then the rest gray. So I'm gonna do that right now. The next row on the pattern is gonna be one with quite a lot of color changes. So, well, first we're gonna have four gray, which is normal, and then we will do one singular green knot, then a single tan knot, which I'm gonna be using DMC 422, then two darker tan brown, I'm using DMC 611. Then a green knot, two black, which is color code 310 on DMC. Two green and then three gray. So I'm going to do the four gray first on the left side and then we will do the others. So after my four gray knots, we're now at the singular green knot. So I'm gonna pull my green string down and do the technique with the half and then cross and then half. And then I'm going to take my gray and put it back under here. And now we need to add in the tan color, is the bottom half of the cloves, I guess you could call it, of Yoda. So I'm going to have a little bit more than I would have of the darker one, but still not a whole lot. Maybe just an arm's length should be fine. Might be a little bit longer, but going to take about that much and then we will add it in like all the other colors and do the same thing. So this one is only one knot so like I do with all of these knots I will do the. So after that one I will take the green and slide that one up with the others and then we will go back to the other brown and take some of that one as well. Probably about the same amount, amount as the other one maybe a little bit less but and then I'm just gonna lift this tape up and put the same one with this because they go in the same spot so it doesn't really matter. Um, so then I'm going to do the same technique as before. This one has two knots though. And then after that knot we will put the lighter tan up through and do, and do one more dark brown knot. Now we have one green so from this mess over here I will take the green. Make sure the rest of those stay up. Pull that one under the base strings and do one knot. Now we will take the brown and put that one up with the rest and we have yet another color added. So this one is black. Um, there's two eyes so you could either do two different strings if you wanted it not to cross in the back. Otherwise you can just do a longer one and have it cross. Doesn't matter if depends on how you want to do it. I'm going to do the same thing, use this same piece of tape, 
because it's the same location as before. Just put that in there, pull it under the strings, and this one is two knots to the right. Then I'll take the green and pull it under and do the other black knot. Next I have two with the green, so I'll pull the green back down again and do two knots with that. Now I'm going to pull the gray back through all of these, and if this happens like this where the black is kind of over that, I just kind of take it, pull it over just so those don't get messed up over there. Um, and then I will do three blacks on the edge. For this next row, we're just going to start with two grays, and then after these, it will be three greens. Now that I have those done, I'm going to do two blacks for the eye here. So I'll pull the black under and do those two knots. Now I'm going to come back and do one green knot. Next, I'm going to take my dark brown color and do two knots with this one. Now I'm going to take my light brown color and pull that one through and do four knots. Now this edge will be two gray knots. The next row will also start with two grays and then four light browns and then two dark browns. So I'm just gonna do this whole roll, this whole row. Um, this is also on the pattern if you wanna look at it, but it's basically the same as the last row except for we won't be doing any black in the eye here, so it'll just be five greens again. So that is row 13 finished, and this is kind of like the halfway point of the bracelet, I would say. So if you look at the pattern, it can kind of be like split in half right here. So like this side is the same as this side, just like reflected over. So I think this is where I'm gonna add the end of the tutorial because I don't want it to be too long. But yeah, after this point, you would just keep following the pattern. So right here, you would just start back here and go this way. And if you wanna like rewatch some of these sections, so like this one right here, this row right here would be the same as like this one right here. And this one with like the green and all the different switches would be the same as this one over here. And so if you want to go back and watch those, you can totally do that. But otherwise, this keychain is the same, like, reflected pattern. So, yeah, I hope you found this helpful. And tag me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Island Bracelets Co. And I will repost your thing and like it. I just want to see all your guys' creations. So I hope you like this and have a great summer.